do the whole thing um well when we have a bigger budget in the future we can use uh licensed music yeah the alma bernstein orchestra <laughs> <laughs> um alma bernstein's past as well hasn't he oh i don't know i, I mean I... alma bernstein yeah 2004 so uh oh that that's quite a, a while ago yes yeah. um and for those of you dyad cape fear people I, I i know that the score is by bernard herman um but today we're doing the 90s version where that uh bernard herman classic original score was slightly adapted um by alma bernstein um with additions of his unused score for the hitchcock film torn curtain uh, which was actually where the Hitchcock Bernard Herman collaboration ended because the studio wanted a, uh, a song and wanted a glossier score. And um, yeah, so, and Hitchcock was, had had a few failures. So he sort of had to uh, bow down to the studio on that one. Um, yeah, which is a great shame because obviously Psycho Vertigo <laughs> is the most <laughs> iconic scores of all time. <laughs> Um, alas, uh, Cape Fear, our 90s uh, Scorsese choice, obviously a remake of the um, brilliant uh, Gregory Peck, Robert uh, Mitchum uh, film. with this fella. I was his lawyer. Well, it just shafted him somehow, right? And what was he in prison for? No, really. What, but what did you do? Have you been following me? Well, it's a small town. Everywhere you turn, I guess we're going to run into each other. <laughs> Dad, you should have just punched him out. Yeah, you know how to fight dirty. You do that for a living. With Martin Balsam. Um, have you seen the original, Will? I haven't. Excellent. Um, this is better. I think, uh, I think, um, well, it depends what you're at. It depends, I, I don't know. I think this is better. This is the one I always rewatch. This guy, uh, he threatened you? He's clever. So that the law can't touch him. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Do you have a daughter around 16? 16? What? Every good man's got to wrestle with the devil. I want you the hell off my property! You, sir, will be hearing from the Ethics Committee. We got this freaking psychopath in our faces. I mean, who knows what's true and what isn't? I'm just losing my mind here. I called the vet, and then he died. Lee, I told you not to let him out. I didn't let him out! I didn't let him out! It would be unethical of me to advise a citizen to take the law into his own hands. You thought about me last night, didn't you? Even ladies. Hello? I think we're alone now. Where are you from? I'm from the Black Forest. Maybe I'm a big bad wolf. Do you mind if I put my arm around you? Hmm. Um, I think the perform... I don't know, because this one's more hammy. Let's say it. This one's a bit campier. Um, oh, we like a bit of campness. We do. We do like a bit of camp. Uh, which I think... I mean, this is just an all-out thriller, yeah. camp-fest 
bit of gore, bit of ev- bit of everything. It's a it's a sort of film you you flick on at what eleven at night. You and your dad are sat in the living room. You're the last one. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't it. catch that. Oh hello, I... Siri. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Yeah, booking no, appointment uh... with dad in living room. Cake <laughs> film. Yeah, no, I've definitely come in or whatever, been there and flicking channels on ITV4 and they're about to get on the houseboat and gone, yeah, all right, let's watch the last, yeah. two, let's watch the last 20 minutes. <laughs> um, it, is a, it is an any point movie, just dive in. I think, yeah. I think, yeah. Such as with most Scorsese movies. I mean, I mean you're not a Sky Movies guy, but um, Wolf of Wall Street is off and on and I just, pff, you've lost me for a couple of hours there. Um, anytime Goodfellas is on, I mean, come on. Are you going to not put Goodfellas on? Or are you a madman? Um, Kate Fear. Robert De Niro as Max Cady uh, on a brutal trail of revenge uh, against the Bowden family. Samuel Bowden, played by Nick Nolte, Lee Bowden, Jessica Lang, and uh, their daughter, Juliette Lewis. Very exciting. Let's see YouTube comments. What is more scarier, this or The Silence of the Lambs? So they both came out in 1991. They're both thrillers uh, that some people thought were horrors, blah, blah, blah. So it's an odd question to start, but what do you think is scarier? Oh, that is a good question. Um, I, I don't know this. Silence of the Lambs is, is scary, um, but there's not... Mm, it's a different type of scare. Mm. I'm not sure. This is Hannibal. In? Let's let's make it a clear winner. Hannibal is scary. Uh, no, I I've always said that. All right, that Buffalo Bill's the scariest part of Silence of the Lambs. Oh, no, I mean the movie. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'd probably. Oh, I don't know. I think uh, psych- psychologically speaking, Silence of the Lambs sticks with yeah. you and haunts you longer. Um. But visceral, not necessarily jump scares, but visceral mm. edgy seat scares, I could say this one. However, I do think that they're both thrillers and not horror. Yep. <laughs> this is a, um, well, we don't usually do, but this is a bad review that somebody's commented. Oh. I never saw the original, but sure do hate this remake. Can't believe it's a Martin Scorsese movie. Though De Niro sure is up for it, he still needed reining in. He gave his character too many quirks or oddities, starting with his hair. And Nick Nolte came off as weak and scared. Not what you want to see in, in him. So was hard to care about. I think Scorsese wanted the themes to be bigger than they turned out to be. Not a good movie. I don't think Nick Nolte... I do think, sorry, I do think Nick Nolte comes off as scared. I don't think he comes off as weak. But of course he's scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost really? like... That's the plot of the film. <laughs> I mean, speaking of De Niro's hair, um, I, he does look a lot like uh, Joaquin in Joker oh, in the yeah. early part of the film. Yeah, he, he looks a lot slick back. Especially when he's walking out of the prison. That shot. He looks just like him. What about your books, Katie? Already read them. Uh, well. That's an intro we missed on the Rocky Horror episode. You know, on the Rocky Horror episode, we were talking about intros, and I couldn't think mm. of hardly any. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh. And then I was like, oh, no, Darth Vader. Oh, for the rest of the week, I was like, oh, no, Darth Vader in, <laughs> in New <laughs> Hope, uh, Yoda in Empire Strikes Back, um, the Terminator in either of the Terminator movies. And when I say you're either, on a, you're on a I big mean Star two. Wars high at the minute, aren't you? Uh, yeah. I, I recently rewatched Empire Strikes Back at the cinema, and I sort of... I didn't forget, but I thought I really remembered how much I enjoy I, those first three movies. It's mm. been, I've been soured by this all this shit recently. I just I, I, they're just so bad and so dull. And I mean, you're not into any at Star Wars, really, are you? Um, I enjoy. I'll go and see one at the, the cinema. Yeah, uh, but I don't really. They're a bit like it. your Marvel, aren't they? They you'll watch them once in the cinema. Yeah, 
actually, isn't Marvel your Marvel? Do you are you you're, are you the same as me, where you watch them once in the cinema and then never think about them again, or are you a bit different? Oh no, I, well, I watch it in the cinema, cinema and then uh, um, cinema and then, and, uh, do, 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 do. Um, and then I watch it if it's on telly, um, yeah. depending which one it is. But I won't buy, go out of my way and buy a Marvel film. No. I bought the first two Guardians movies, mainly because I wanted to buy the second movie, and I'm very anal, and I'm not going to buy the sec just the second movie. I'll obviously buy the first. Because uh, the second going to the Galaxy movie, I, I really, really, really enjoyed that. I watched that I've not seen the second one. In, yeah, I watched that multiple times in the cinemas, actually. Um, I've, I saw that multiple times in the cinemas, and I've watched the Blu-ray multiple times, but I've only seen Guardians, the first one, once. Um, when it was a date, actually, Will, in, oh. in one of my first high school dates or whatever. Oh. Um, which should have been year nine, I think, or something. Oh, something. you started early. Oh, well, it was hardly. It was, it was like a double date thing, and there was lots All of right. light hand holding. Yeah, yeah. And, um, do you want to know the really awkward story? Please. So, I think so we all the, do. there is no worse phrase than, go on, be my girlfriend. Is that so? The, and there's just no nice way around it. Um, Prison. So I thought I'd whisper, "Let's do it." Um, <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then it was like a very, very loud action scene. So that obviously couldn't, you know. And then she, she went, "What?" And I went, "Let's do it." She went, "What?" And I said, "Do you want to be my girlfriend?" And she said, "Yeah." Um, Aww. Yeah. How romantic. Very nice. Two weeks? That's a record for you, isn't it? It is outside. No. This is the thing. I'm either very fleeting or very long. I'm actually, in reality, we're only looking at three real. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, not many. Yeah, you, know, you, don't, you don't count some of them. You don't count some of them. In, in actuality, Weird. I only really count one. Me. You, yeah, you've, you've never, you've not <laughs> left me yet. Um, best ten minute stretch. Why don't you kick us off, Will? I so I've cheated majorly. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think you know what's coming in. But but before that, I'll say the bit where they're in the car park and um, Sam's hiding behind like the trash. Yes, the beating. Uh, ones. Yeah, that's ten minutes, and then the last forty minutes of the film. <laughs> yeah, the the I'll. I'll split it. I'll do ex I've got the, I've got in the boat house, house. on the yeah. boats. Yeah. I've got boat house as a sort of twenty minute extended sequence into the whole you know the or well, just the whole boat. If yeah. there's something I love in a movie, well, what do I love in movies, Will? A boat. A boat, weddings. <laughs> I'm currently writing a script and the basis of the start of it was what do I like? And I was like, weddings. Uh, political thrillers, man on the run, law movies, erotic thrillers. Oh, just make a big one. <laughs> and um, it's not going too bad, actually. Um, I mean, I may... um, Go on. I took my first deep delve into Peep Show, the musical comedy, oh, uh, yes. last night, uh, because I've, I've just been experimenting with writing songs for the past mm -hmm. God knows how many months, and I've realised it's a lot easier to write lyrics before music. Uh, so... Mm. I'm starting. Well, I, I've I've written the first scene and the first two songs, uh, so I might get a debut, uh, a little preview. Yeah. But the um, because the whole lyric or music thing is always a big question, isn't it? Sondheim yeah, says he just writes them both at the same time. Well, that's because it's him that does both usually. Um, yes. But I thought it would be easier to write music first because I'm. I'm less musically talented, so I thought get a good get a good sound, and then I can put any lyrics mm. to it. But the more I think about it, it's it's the lyric it it's the way that the words flow, and you you put the music around the lyrics. It's very interesting. It's Are you fun. starting with a quote and then figuring out a rhyme? Um, to go before it, sometimes. <laughs> but then that's funny because you get some really outlandish rhymes. <laughs> oh, that's, that's what anybody would want in a show. Outlandish ones. 
Uh, yeah, the beating the boat. The drama class. Mm. Uh, the thumb sucking scene. Um, very unsettling and uh, disturbing, but uh, a marvellous 10 minutes. Uh, excellent, De Niro. Excellent, Juliet Lewis. Um, Juliet, it's weird because I obviously, the main one, Juliet Lewis, for me is, is Audrey in um, Christmas Vacation. She's, <laughs> she's Audrey in Christmas Vacation. So I'm always thinking about her tongue on a pole or, no, no, that, no, that's, that's Christmas Story. I'm always thinking of when she's frozen. And she's like, I think uh, Audrey's frozen, dear. <laughs> um, Christmas Vacation, what a film. Uh, unfortunately, not making it, didn't make it into our uh, last uh, Christmas um, bundle. But it will be on our upcoming Christmas bundle. And when I mean upcoming, I mean in 10 months. Um, so, the, um, <laughs> so basically, the, um, yeah, no, Juliet Lewis is, is excellent in this I, is there a weak performance in this film? <coughs> is there anybody oh. we recast? Is there anybody we change around? De Niro. <laughs> well, that's what I was um, I don't know. It, this, you could you could argue uh, Jessica, but no, you couldn't. <laughs> no, you couldn't. <laughs> I don't know. So, um, go and argue it. Well, it'll be interesting. I've just said that I, they've not. She's not really got that much to do, mm. except for the final sort of bit. Yeah. Um, mm. Well, the added the scene, the scene where she meet, uh, where he pulls up and gives her the dog lead. They added that because uh, Jessica thought that um, they needed to see each other before the climax. Um, yeah. Whereas in the original scripts, they they met for the first time in the climax. Um, what's her favourite Jessica line? You're not an American Horror Story guy, are you, Will? I'm not. I've never seen it. No. Those, uh, first season is absolutely excellent. Second season is greatly enjoyable. Third season is bad. Fourth season is weird. Fifth season is a big, campy, messy schlock fest. Um, that, yeah, there, there are a lot yeah. of words that I've never heard before. <laughs> like, it's just messy and it's just Lady Gaga's a vampire. Oh, is that the Lady Gaga? Lady Gaga. Uh, the Lady Gaga's a vampire, but then there's also a murderer and Chloe Savonnier is in it. And, and, um, and, and then there's real life murderers in, in like a dream sequence. And I, I it's an enjoyable, it's, it, <laughs> It's an enjoyable farce. Um, okay. Ap Apocalypse was was similarly messy and and weird in its plotting. Uh, 1984 felt like a back to basics, and it felt really good. Uh, I really enjoyed 1984. It was uh, a fun one. Uh, maybe we'll maybe we maybe we'll do American Horror Story. People like it. Um, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I. Th I, I I, th I don't know. Where you, you're not really a big horror guy. Well, I love horror. Yeah, but you don't strike me as. <laughs> I love a horror. I if I if I don't know what to put on, I'll put a horror movie on. Oh, fair enough. I love I love horror. But how dare you you just assume? I'm sorry, Will. It's okay. I publicly it's apologize okay. for my Thank misreading. You. Um, and another loose, very loose 10 minutes is the intro to the case, the sort of, yeah. where he pulls up to him and he, they, we initially learn about the rape of the battery case. And then he talks to, um, the guy from, uh, which Die Hard is that guy from? Die Hard is the, is the, um, the guy in the air booth, the, the main air investigator in Die Hard 2. Uh, air investigator. What's the term? He's like the main. Oh. Um, what are they call air marshal? He's, yeah, no. He's um. Uh, Is he Liam Neeson in um, Nonstop? I haven't seen Nonstop. Oh, it's great. Is it great um, though? Is it actually great? It's great. <laughs> I Would love you Eddie. Genuinely describe Liam it as Neeson. a great film. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fred Thompson. Cinema. Fred Thompson, that's it. Who died in that's 2015? What you can call him. Unfortunately. Oh. 
um, who played Trudeau. Any people coming for you, Katie? What about your books? All ready to read them. I, I don't know what that term is. Uh, last line, it blew you through the back wall of the theater. This time, it will blow you sky high. That's the... Uh, the title oh. for Die Hard too. What a movie. What a movie. Famously, the best Die Hard movie. <laughs> Um, which we'll discuss soon enough, actually. They're coming up. Um, so get excited, everybody, for the diehards. Um, but, uh, yeah, Fred Thompson, and where we reveal that he buried the report. Mm. Here's, here's a Tom big question. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's a big, it's just a bare-bones thriller. But is this movie meant to be an indictment on the law system? Because it discusses you know, ethics and morals within the law court. It discusses eth ethics and politics within rape trials. Like the main reason that um, Juliana, Juli Ileana Douglas doesn't come forward is because she's seen what mm. happens in rape trials and she sees that she'll be, you know, are you promiscuous, were you drunk and all the terrible things that we know still happen. And this is 91 and they still happen. We're still having these conversations today. Um, I think there's a deep underlying thing about the yeah. wrongness of the law system. What's, um, what's the sort of, how prevalent are those themes in the original? Um, they're there. I mean, you've, I mean, the crux of the story is obviously Samuel Bowden as this, um, you know, moral, Vengeful. yeah, moral guy who, yeah. You know, you should have seen what he did to her. You know, he beat yeah. her, he broke her bones, and she was 16. Mm. And, yeah, is, you know, is Samuel Bowden in the right? I mean, I think it's, it's clear that uh, he was right to lock him up for a long time. But is he in the right? But this is the thing. Is he in the right when, the, when he is literally going against the system? He, you know, it's like, well, I think you'll be very excited for an upcoming episode of Peep Show based on 12 Angry Men. Cape Fear? Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> um, where the, these same themes are discussed. Oh, well, I, I think love you 12 will... Angry Men. Uh, you know I do. <laughs> <laughs> Starring Martin Balsam. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll take a vote. The, the, Martin Balsam's role in 12 Angry Men is to every 20 minutes go, okay, let's take another vote. Uh, and he's great in it. I mean, I'm obviously greatly underestimating. He, he only plays uh, judgmental people in movies. Yes, he's <laughs> This is our, like, I, I wrote this down as a note. This is like our third Martin Balsam movie, is it? <laughs> Martin Balsam has appeared more than De Niro so far. Well, no, wow. tied, tied with De Niro. There's... We did all, all the President's men. men. Psycho is the guy, is the <laughs> cop in Psycho. Now Kate Fear, and, and, and I think that's it. Right. Uh, I've, and I've talked about the two um, Twilight Zones he's in that are both excellent. Um, I was watching Jeopardy the other day, and they did a Twilight Zone um, category, and I got them all, apart from the final clue, because they didn't go for it. Instead, they went for... Um, I've never seen Jeopardy. Oh, Will... Do yourself a favour. Get on Netflix. You lose a day and a half straight away. Oh, Alex Trebek is the most soothing voice in the world. Um, do 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 do. 
every every like month or so they put more episodes on and then I just plow through them. I binge, I, I haven't binge watched a, a new series in a very long time, apart from I'm starting Peep Show, but I'm not binge watching that actually. I'm watching two seasons of Fortnite or whatever it is. Um, but I binge watched Jeopardy. <laughs> uh, what is uh, Great Scene in Groundhog Day? What is Tidic Lake Tidicada? The Finger Lakes. <laughs> Uh, wonderful stuff. Um, we move on to Tom's really specific favorite part of the film. Uh, the way that the sh uh, squash is shot. The, just that quick, aggressive cutting. The fireworks. Oh. That image of De Niro on the wall with the fireworks against him. Wow. That's an indelible... That's one of yeah. the first images I think of. I think of the boathouse, then I start thinking about that fireworks scene. Mm. And, um, you know, the, on the making of, they were talking a lot about how Jessica Lang is clearly, has clearly not been satisfied by the sex, um, whether, it, you know, it's because she didn't finish or whatever. And so her going to the dressing table and so sort of, she's still aroused by something. And then she sees Katie and who knows? Who knows? Is there an arousal? It's a fire workout. Yes. Um, the cameos. I like. I. I really think all three cameo. I, Robert Mitchum's an extended cameo, obviously, as the as the guy. Uh, but Gregory Peck as the southern yep. spouting lawyer, and then Martin Balsam as the judge. Um, cause that's that, nice to see. It is because that's the sort of thing could be very kitschy, and could yeah. be very you know, could take you out of it completely. But all three work really well. And also I think it's because they're more than cameos. It's, it's, they're not forced in roles or whatever. Uh, Robert Mitchum, mainly Robert Mitchum, because of, uh, it's an extended scene, um, an, an extended couple of scenes. I, I don't know how, I think I like how, I don't know what I think, about I wish that it was Robert Mitchum playing the lawyer maybe and so that he could be in a scene with De Niro and then Gregory Peck was in the scene with the Sam Bowden. But then I also like the the fact that they're playing Yeah, sorry, so Robert Mitchum played the Max Cady role, I should have said this to you. Um and Gregory Peck played the Samuel Bowden. And they're the only two names that stick from the original. The piano key missing. We've talked about this before in an episode about great foreshadowing moments. And I mm. always, it's just an image that's always stuck with me that thing, 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 thing. Somebody's been messing around the with piano. the piano. Yeah, yeah. And um, the whole clink, 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 clink. Bless you. Um, Thank you. And then the piano key's missing. Just a great, great reveal. Mm. Uh, anytime Nick Nolte aggressively shuts blinds. <laughs> Like me with the towel. Like, just like you with the towel and baby bunnies in bed. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know whether it's a change. I don't know what the, the phone ring scare, where they're all sat around <laughs> the dinner table and, yeah, no, we're all fine and we're all fine now, aren't we? And then, ah! They all, when the phone rings. I don't know whether that's a bit too on the nose. No, they've just, they've just watched Scream. Yes. Uh, the upside down shot. Classic. Nolan's influence for the end of the Dark Knight. Really? Oh yeah. Well, it's the same shot, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> same thing. Uh, counselor, counselor. That's I. I, I think it's... this is one of my dad's favourite films because he's he really? always comment. He always quotes counselor anytime. <laughs> like he's. I don't want to say he's cut out of his depth but anytime like a big long movie conversation starts because certain people in my family friend circle we all love movies and all that and so certain times i won't know out of his depth's wrong but like he's clearly didn't realize that we we're going to be talking about movie performances for this long so he has to join in and he always goes i've never seen a better performance than Counselor, counselor. Is this, this is his favorite De Niro performance then? i think it might be one of his favorite performances ever I wow. really do. I mean, it's a great performance. It's mm. great. It made it onto my uh, 
best male performances list. It was mm. one of my 90s choices. Um, the reception desk lies of, oh, me and my wife, and now that my daughter, little daughter, Den is dead. <laughs> yeah, an evil man, he's, and he's so <laughs> believable. Is a is a thing. I think, in actuality, uh, Max Cady would be a really good drama teacher because he's clearly good at acting. You know, he he, he does multiple <laughs> lie stories. His advice he gives to Juliette Lewis of use that fear and, you know, use it in your performance. I've been given that before. So, <laughs> you know, I think he could, in another world, make Max Cady could have been a great drama teacher. She's your CRA level. That's the question. A level, why not? Yeah. Let's give him. <laughs> Look at him, Otto. <laughs> yeah, he's going to really. <laughs> he's going to start killing people. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, you know, we're really going to. Uh, really going <laughs> to. Okay, so I've got a flare gun here. This <laughs> dripping wax down his hand. <laughs> um, the sexus under the bin. Have you read any Henry Miller, Will? I haven't. What, what else has he written? Sexus, Nexus, and Plexus. The very, very dirty novels. Uh, that's Ooh. why they were sort of I controversial at the time. Don't read that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, they're very smutty. Well, not smutty. They're brilliantly written. But um, there's a very awkward moment in class. We were in a feminist history. His, his story. <laughs> history. Uh, feminist history class. Uh, in, yeah. a, in a roundabout way. And um, the, the the teacher was like, okay, yeah, read some of this out. And uh, so Dave, uh, who was in our class, put his hand straight up and um, then just started reading. She rubbed her dirty cunt and shoved me in the bath and fucked me. And I, I thought, what the hell is happening? <laughs> I genuinely was astounded by <laughs> Can we, can we say that word on YouTube? Yeah. We've used it before. Uh, have we? Yeah, in the Misery episode. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, we've used it before in another episode. Uh, we'll use it in Gone Girl. Oh, I, 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 I yeah. C words. I think we talked about it in uh, Hitler Carol. I don't think we've used it. Uh, hot Fuzz. I think I've used it. Who cares? If you're listening to a, if you're a child listening to a Kate Fear podcast, good. <laughs> I'm glad that your movie taste is this good. I'm glad it's it's down as explicit. It's down as not for kids. Ah, oh, it's fine then. It's fine. <laughs> um, the drag, the dressing up like the like oh, the, the housemaid, <laughs> uh, dressing up like the housemaid. Uh, I do have a change though. When he goes, uh, yes, yes, it's hard. It's not his voice. You can tell it's not his voice. Mm. I don't know why they don't... It's only three words. De Niro is one of our great actors. Surely he can do... Yes, it's hard. He can do a vaguely feminine, vaguely Spanish accent. For if if, if Robin words. Williams can do it. <laughs> oh, lordy. <laughs> It'd be funny if, his, if Max Cady's <laughs> drag was Mrs. Doubtfire. And he was like, oh. <laughs> oh, yes, it's warm down here. Ooh, watch out for the piano wire. Uh, sorry, my good friend, Solithiel. Um, the car reveal. One of the almighty hmm. gasps yeah. in movie history. Good God. It's scary. Uh, it's scary. And I always, uh, there was as a child, I was always like, how did he do it? But then, I, I don't know why as a child I missed this, but he's got that belt wrapped around him, hasn't he? And he's hmm. hooked himself in. And his back's completely covered with dirt and, you know, a little bloody... It's messed up. It is. The flare wax, as talked about. Yeah. The, um, just a great, I don't care about, you know, my father <laughs> was a snake charmer, my mother drank arsenic. Um, mm -hmm. The rock miss. Oh. Yeah. And uh, the final sync where he starts speaking tongues. <laughs> I'm going to the Lord here. <laughs> Shepard. Shepard takes me. Uh, Will's more general favorite part of the film. Uh, here's a question. Oh, what would how how would you react if uh, 
Wow. Uh, Robert De Niro, well, maybe not Robert De Niro. Someone was sat in front of you in a cinema smoking. I mean, obviously, you can't do That's it nowadays. Yeah. I would do one of my classic, famous, passive aggressive comments. <laughs> I would say, Excuse me, could you please be quiet? Uh, well, it depends <laughs> where I am. If I'm up north and it's two children sat next to me like it was in Justice League, straight away. Well, no, actually, not straight away. I gave them half an hour to shut up and then. What was what did he say? Wonder Woman came on, and Gal Gadot's a very attractive woman. I partly agreed with them, but they went, "Oh, yeah, she'd get it." I thought, oh. "Would you please be quiet?" <laughs> uh, and then um, I'm usually surrounded by people who are similarly annoyed and do it for me. Uh, John Wick Chapter Three. There were two knobheads who were like, "Oh yes, yeah, stab him!" And actually, no, that's not too bad. If you're talking about the movie, that's not. Oh, no, because I've just said that the Wonder Woman woman. But no. But Any running commentary is about uh, laughing is fine. To unless a it's Rocky Horror, but that's like a very yeah. specific thing. Anyway. Um, um, what else is on my list? Um, when he's sat in the car, um, he comes out of the cinema and he's there in the car park. Mm-hmm. Uh, the look on his face is uh, he gets top marks from me. Um, You're going to learn about Lars. Said something about Lars. I've got uh, come out, come out again. That's <laughs> yeah. great. Uh, and then I've got the gangster teddy bear. That's a great. Mm. I love the gangster teddy bear. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, it works. It's a nice little apparatus. Uh, so, as previously mentioned, this was the same year as Silence of the Lambs, and Silence of the Lambs won everything. <laughs> and I don't think we have any arguments there. Now, the big question, really, um, is you haven't seen Fisher King, um, but Mercedes Rule is very good in it. Is she as good as Juliette Lewis in Cape Fear? I'm going to say yes, I think Mercedes Rule is the rightful winner there. Do we think Jessica Lang's missing a nomination here? No. No. Why, why are you so down on Jessica <laughs> Lang? Have you not seen Tootsie? I, I have not. I, Jessica Lang's fine, but um, this performance isn't Oscar worthy. You can say that. It's nomination worthy. Okay. I think I have seen The Fisher King. With uh, Robin Williams and Jeff uh, Bridges? Yeah. Where he's homeless and then he helps him. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, do you agree with me that the Mercedes rule is, 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 is yeah. better than Julia Lewis? Yeah. Good film, The Fish King. I very much like it. I think it loses its way at the end. I think it, goes I think it was on... Uh, when I watched... Um, oh, it must be Terms of Endearment or something. It was one of the films back when they, they advertised upcoming films beforehand. Oh, it was right. on that. Hmm. Um, so the big question is this. So Nolte doesn't get nominated uh, because he's already nominated for Prince of Tides. And I think in actuality, he's better in Cape Fear, but we'll leave the Nolte conversation. Who's better, Hopkins or De Niro? Uh. I know. So (laughs) let's break it down. This must have been a hard discussion to have (laughs) when they chose it. So you're in, you're in 1991. You get your Oscar ballot through. So you don't have the bias of knowing that Anthony Hopkins won. Who do you mm. tick? Who do you vote for? De Niro. I think I'd probably go De Niro too, just out of spite. Yeah for him not being nominated for Best Supporting Actor. (laughs) But no, actually, because I think that my spite there is that Ted Levine isn't nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Ted Levine needs to be nominated um, for Best Supporting Actor for Buffalo Bill, and Anthony needs to be nominated for Best Actor. I think um, if you look at just, I don't know baseball terms, but (laughs) if you look at being on the pitch (laughs) and scoring that many... Um, home runs in such little time you got to go Hopkins no, no, I think I think Hopkins was the the right winner at the end of the day yeah um, um, 
do we think there's a nomination for best screenplay? Uh, no. 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 Uh, anything else we uh, we think uh, deserves a nomination? Obviously, Scar. Scar. It, can't, it can't get Scar because it's the old Scar. Um, yeah, I, I, maybe editing. Uh, however, those are five astoundingly edited movies. Yeah. Maybe not the commitments. I don't think the best part of the commitments is it's editing. <laughs> Rest in peace, Alan Parker, by the way. I mean, by the time that this comes out, he'll have been um, dead, unfortunately, for a very long time. But uh, rest in peace, Alan Parker. Me? Look, I was your lawyer. I defended you. I mean, why not badger the DA or the judge? <laughs> badger. Yeah, well, why not then? Yeah, why not badger. then? Badger. Best I remember, they was just doing right by their jobs. Oh, I didn't do my job. Is that right? Look, I, I pleaded you out to a lesser included offense. You could have gotten rape instead of battery. Oh, I'd have been up for parole either way in seven years, according to the Georgia Penal Code. Rape is a capital offense. I mean, you know, you could have gotten life, you could have done death, you could be sitting on death row right now. I learned to read during my stretch. First, Spot goes through the farm, then runaway bunny, then law books mostly. Did you know that after I discharged you, I acted as my own attorney? Applied several times for an appeal. No, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. So, here we are. Two lawyers, for all practical purposes, talking shop. All right, how much do you want, Mr. Katie? Will's favorite building on set. It's the boat house. What a... Wo <laughs> Get me a house... Get me a houseboat, Will. I know it's not within your power to do so, uh, but... Oh, you, you'd be very wrong. I would adore a houseboat. I, I, I saw one of the other... We were walking... Uh, oh, it just... Um, it was like a little dock area yeah. off um, just by Tower Bridge. Some lovely houseboats. Yes. Um, I, I think boats full stop. I'm a big mm. boat guy. Uh, I, I very much... Like boats. They're expensive. Well, yes, this is the problem. I'd rather have a house. I mean, that's just me being biased because I do like houses. Yeah, I think, I mean, I mean if it was, if it was a, it's like a boat or a house. A lot of people choose, you either get a really nice house or a really nice car. But you can't, you can't both because obviously... Oh, I would definitely houses. pick a nice house over a nice It's always a house. Yeah, mm. just, get, just get a family a family car. Yeah, I've never been a big car guy. I've never been a big car guy, but I, I I'd I'm, like an open top car. Yeah, I'm a I car see... guy enough to to think when I retire or reach a midlife crisis, I'll yeah. get myself a nice car. Yeah, but I work I work from a young age, start souping up my engines or whatever. Because I've just got the, not got the money. I'm a big, I'm a big window down guy. I love my windows fully down. From the motorway. And, oh yeah, and blasting music. Oh. Uh, one of my breakdown points. I was driving the motorway in the in heavy rain. My windows down, blasting uh, uh, "Runaway" by Del Shannon. <clears throat> I was, yeah, that was rough. But also, Maybe. on the happy end times, I also like to have my windows down and motorway ride and, yeah, listen to great music. Um, but sometimes I listen to podcasts, and so you can't really have your music, you, you can't really have your windows down. It varies. We what usually, can I say? I'm a crazy guy. We like listen to Elaine on a Sunday. Yes, Elaine like on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine Page on Sunday. Um, best That's single minute. minute. Uh, Will, why don't you kick us off? I've got the, the the opening, the introduction yes, the opening to Max, uh, which is great. Um, and I've also got the garroting. I love a good garrot. It's one of the most hor horrific things to look at. It's awful, isn't it? But I love a good garrot. Um, yeah, the prison, the cinema, the parade. Mm -hmm. Great stuff, really well. I mean, they, he's you know he's stealing the the strangers on a train the looking forward whilst everybody else is looking at the other thing. And it's not as good as Strange on the Train because you haven't got the tennis. Bob, 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 Bob. 
Uh, but I think that just that opening prison sequence with the with the, I call it a punchline, but the already read them, and you're like, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> and also th- that pays into a great um, uh, dramatic irony when he's talking about you know this guy's illiterate. You know I had to read everything to him, and now we know. <laughs> Mm, then what were all those law books? Uh, mm. <laughs> yeah, he's sodomized by 10 white guys or 10 black guys. What would be my price, counselor? Excellent stuff. Um, best line, which leads us into best line. And there are some barn burners here. Let's try a few of these on for size. Uh, the, 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 not the departed, that's the next episode. I ain't no white trash piece of shit. I'm better than you all. I can outlearn you. I can outread you. I can outthink you. And I can outphilosophize you. And I'm going to outlast you. You think a couple of whacks to my gut is going to get me down? I'm going to take a hell of a lot more than that, counselor, to prove you're better than me. Oof. Anything? Me? Yeah. You are the other uh, co-host, of course. I, 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 I sure am. Uh, counselor... <laughs> I am like God, a God like me. I am as large as God. He is as small as I. He cannot be above me, nor I beneath him be. There's always something unsettling about people who know Bible quotes. Mm. Even even priests <laughs> who know full Bible quotes and um, and know the I hope they do and know the numbers and such. It's very unsettling. I like I like what the uh, the sort of uh, the the mirror. Uh, window double thing where he's like he takes his clothes off and the police guy is like I don't know whether to look at him or read him read him because he's got so many tattoos well gee golly gosh I sure am a, I sure am sorry I offended you you white ass <laughs> piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> wonderful Joe John Baker from Fletch uh, <laughs> this row is wonderful in this is that Tom Lasorda I hate Tom Lasorda bang uh I understand I'm not your tap. Too many tattoos. Thing is, there isn't much else to do in prison except desecrate your flesh. Uh, and another unsettler. You ready to be born again, Miss Bowden? Whoosh. Just gives me the creeps. Any of the best lines, Will? Um, your mum is not happy. Your dad is not happy. And you know what? You're not happy. <laughs> uh, what's the change? I've uh, got one. Shoot, oh. shoot. No, no, you go. You go, Tom. Do I've got it. a few. I've got a few. So I'll do my first and then you do. Um, when Jessica Lang goes, marijuana, well, it's on the same level as incest, necrophilia, or bestiality. I don't think it is. <laughs> I, know she's, I know she's joking, but... <laughs> the, the whole, yeah, incest, necrophilia, bestiality, marijuana. Come on, just... <laughs> uh, any, anything else? I've got, just after the finger sucking, you know what I'm oh, going to yes. say, hopefully. Bad kiss. Oh, no, I think it's a perfect it's, kiss, because I, I mean, think it, it's got the element of... It's, it's unsettling enough, but it's, yeah. it gave me the creeps, because it's like very... It reminded me of a, a YouTube video I watched. No, it was just like a scrolling down Facebook. This guy who goes around uh, people's, his ex's houses and on this TV show, and he asks to make out with their mum. It's a very strange show. And so he's just sat there getting off with these, what, 70-year-old women, while his ex-girlfriend has to sit there and watch and see how long they can take it. And it's just all clumsy and tongue and... But I think that works for this, because Juliette Lewis is but a child. And she's trying to be sexy, and she's, you know, she's trying to... And also he's... Very aggressive. Uh, yeah. yeah. Rough stuff. The, I, I, I've always found it funny, the snap zoom to Nick Nolte <clears throat> when he finds out that the dog's dead and he's like this on the car. Ooh, and he's got his hands on the wheel. I've always... I've, dog I've, is dead. I've always found that... Uh, yeah, dog is dead. I've always found that very funny. Uh, where do you sit on the end? Because it mean, makes complete sense because it's the... Judging by it's in your change. <laughs> I don't know where you sit on it. No, but I don't. I think I put a question mark next to it because it works completely as it be in the school pro, school report. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't know. It's it's the south. It's the south. <laughs> it's the south. Yes. Any other changes, Will? Uh, no, that's. Uh, I mean, I suppose you could st- that the the strange um, inverted colour flash of De Niro at the window, mm. but just because it I doesn't know, really like happen. It. It, it's nice, but it doesn't happen. It doesn't really fit. It's it's that. No, they use it twice, don't they? They use it when yeah. during the sex scene, and uh, they use it there. There's some, it's real, there are some real crazy, it reminds me a bit of an Oliver Stone, of a a late 90s Oliver Stone movie, like Any Given Sunday, or JFK does it a bit better, but Any Given Sunday is just insane with its editing, and there's just shots of Ben-Hur, and then there's thunder, and if it wasn't for Al Pacino. Okay, I mean, uh. I'll have to think about all that. So, um, class is tomorrow in room 110, right? No, it's been changed to the theater. I mean, what better place for drama, right? Yeah. And remember, Danielle, you can use all those fears to draw upon and learn. You know this little tune? If you wanna do right, Trust in me, because I'm the do-right man. Okay? <laughs> okay, night now. Okay. Good night. I... I... It's not a change, but it, it, it just... It, it stayed in my mind. I couldn't stop thinking about it. Um, De Niro seems like he's doing an impression of Tommy Lee Jones. In what? In, in every movie, because Tommy Lee Jones plays the same dirty cop in every movie. No. <laughs> what Tommy Lee Jones? What about what about JFK? Yeah, uh, he's, he's doing a... an impression. If anything, he's, he is he is reminiscent of uh, yeah. Tommy Lee Jones in JFK, which came out this same year. Yeah. Um, as Clay Shaw, um, but Tommy Lee Jones in The Fugitive. I mean, come on. Are you a big? I, I can I can imagine you're a huge fugitive guy. I I love the fugitive. I love the fugitive. Um, I'm hit and miss with Tommy Lee Jones, unfortunately, which is a shame. What about um, No Country? Oh, I love No Country. Yeah, that is one of the most unsettling, uh, you know, haunting <laughs> endings of all time. Tommy Lee <laughs> Jones slowly telling you about a dream and realizing that you might as well just accept death now. Anything left from your notes, Will? No. Um, what the hell is a whiskey in Pepto Bismol cocktail? Um, it's on my order list. Uh, whiskey Pepto. No, I no, I'm not saying it's a real cocktail, Will. Right. I, 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 <laughs> I don't think it's got a name. I just what is that supposed to help your stomach? Because the whiskey can't help, and is it supposed to make? it go down easier or uh i mean the full recipe is on urban dictionary uh what else is in there Pepto Bismol and jean bean or any other whiskey type spirit are enjoyed in the 1992 remake cape fear there uh, <laughs> the, the two liquids due to not being similar in thickness won't mix therefore leaving them separate on top of each other and looking like a rusty pink cadillac there you go um the recipe, if if you want to make this at home, I think I, um, I think I've figured it out. Will you just pour one in and then you pour the other in, don't you? Yeah, but it's, and you can't even like mix them. Steps. You can't even mix them because it wants the to do. You the... can try shaking, I suppose. Yeah, add a add an egg in, Rocky style. Oh God, <laughs> that nutritious high protein and swallow raw eggs. I'm trying to build up his chest, arms, and legs. Uh, Rocky Horror, go listen to the Rocky Horror episode. I don't know whether to put it in change or specific favourite part or what, but the slip on the blood 
I don't know. Is that funny? Is that good? <laughs> it's, it's camp, isn't it? And it's, it's, it's we let it off. We let it. It's very, very camp. Uh, alternate ending corner, there isn't one. Uh, but uh, we do have lots of fun facts. Robert De Niro was tattooed with vegetable dyes, which faded after a few months. Uh, the scene in the high school auditorium was completely ad-libbed by De Niro and Juliette Lewis and done on the first take. Uh, the thick accent De Niro used to play Katie reportedly gave Martin Scorsese the creeps. And as a joke, De Niro would call Scorsese's house, leaving voicemails as Katie. Uh, <laughs> are you ready for this one? Steven Spielberg was originally set to direct. He later recommended Martin Scorsese for the job and personally called Scorsese, letting him know that this was a commercial film that had potential to be a hit, which would exercise more power for Scorsese to make his films. This was, of course, after Last Temptation of Christ, which was a uh, big... A miss. Uh, a bit, not a miss, it's an excellent, excellent mm. film, but it, it was a commercial A film. box office flop. Oh, yes. The, the auditorium scene was originally scripted as a chase scene, but Martin Scorsese wanted it to be a seduction. Uh, Martin Scorsese read the original script three times while making Goodfellas and hated it each time because oh. of how the Bowdens were a happy family and he wanted them to be miserable. Are you ready for this one? De Niro paid a dentist $5,000 to make his teeth look suitably bad for the role of Katie. After filming, he paid $20,000 to have them <laughs> fixed. Jesus. Oh, I wish I had that money. Yeah. Uh, Drew Barrymore screen tested for Danielle Bowden. Uh, she later said that she acted all over the place and it was just the biggest disaster of her life. That sounds like my Evita audition. <laughs> uh, Reese Witherspoon auditioned for the role of Danielle Bowden. Uh, Robert De Niro played scenes with Kevin Klein and Phoebe Cates in the Sam and Danielle roles for Martin Scorsese when De Niro was trying to interest him in directing the film. Which is very weird, because Kevin Klein and Phoebe Cates would have been dating, if not married, at the time. I don't know why mm. she's playing his daughter. She is slightly younger than him. They're still together yeah. now. Oh, they are very good. Ooh, I, I, oh, why did she play Lee? Have I talked about my love for Phoebe Cates yet on the show? No. It'll come up on Gremlins, I'm sure. I love <laughs> Phoebe Cates. Phoebe Cates in Gremlins, one of the most beautiful women ever. Um, what's next? When Spielberg was attached to direct, he had plans on casting Bill Murray as Max Cady. What does that movie look like? <laughs> Jesus. Do you know Bill Murray was originally the uh, uh, was originally going to be the Burton Batman? Really? Oh, um, oh no. Oh dear. Mm. Um, thought though, if uh, if Murray was Max, mm. um, I can very easily see Dreyfus as, as yeah. Uh, I was going to say uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Murray as Max Cady has been made. It's called What About Bob. <laughs> Um, I'm surprised someone hasn't parodied that as like a horror movie trailer, but clips from What About Bob with like a scary background music. I think What About Bob isn't as well known as it should be. What About yeah. Bob's excellent. <laughs> and uh, that's it for fun facts. Tom's big question, we've sort of hit on a few of them. What's your favourite tattoo, Will? I mean, there's a big one on the back. That's quite good. But I like the clown with the Bible and the gun. <laughs> I think that looks a bit amateur. Oh, okay. Sorry, I did the okay. <laughs> As an artist myself. Um, so, um, I think he missed the trick because um, he could have had it on his front, mm -hmm. the, the Wayne scales, and he could have, like, some people can move the, the, the pecs about, can't they? And so he could have <laughs> done the balancing act with the scales on his tattoo. It could yeah, have been a, an, an animated tattoo. <laughs> Every time he walks to somebody, he's like... Mm. What's happening with the affair? What's, well, it's not an affair. They've not had sex yet. Is he going to have sex with Ileana Douglas? Nick Nolte? Sure. Yeah, I think so. Ileana Douglas, I've always rated. I don't know why Ileana Douglas isn't in more things. She's great in 
Goodfellas, she's great in this. She's great. I will never forget her performance in this. I think she's so marvellous in this. I don't know why she isn't in more. Um, and that's that. Synopsis of a sequel. I mean, he's dead. I could see a sequel. I think it's campy enough to have... I don't know. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> but also, yes. <laughs> I would watch a really, really, really bad... Oh sequel yeah. to this. This is the yeah, but this is on the verge of bad movie, but it's not. If you yeah. know what I mean, but yeah, it's, no, it, it's it's got everything that I love about bad movies on a on a Saturday night. It's Scorsese making a, just a bare bones thriller. He's admitted yeah. this. He said, "I really wanted to look at a genre and make it like and and not make it." be a deconstruction, just make an, a genuine thriller, and he succeeds. Um, he actually, in the interview, said, you know, I, I wanted to make, you know, like a Western, or I'd love to see a Scorsese Western. Mm. How that? I wonder what that would look like. I'd be very intrigued. Oh. And that's it for Cape Thea. Oh. Um, so our next choice is... It's, he's finally going to win his Oscar for The Departed. Hey. Uh, so we'll see you there. And uh, and I'll see you too. Yeah, it seems that my mouse... Oh, no, my mouse does work now. My mouse stopped working. <laughs> so uh, the dearly, dearly departed. See you then. da 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 da